very stubborn. Um, that's, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's why sometimes when I'm crying, laughing, and everything was like, go, go, go more, and I'm just uh, very strict with myself. And um, because I love what, I, what I'm doing, and making is my freedom. Like I, we have a lot of responsibilities here and shaping us taxes and kids mm -hmm. and family and life. But when I went in my workshop, it's just the hours. It's just like seconds when I realized I've already passed six hours. I never realized that that it's just a uh, time when because I love what I'm doing. Um, that makes me think of. Uh and I, I know a lot of makers have all often said, that's my child, you know what? <laughs> so uh, how does, or just throw that out there for, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, 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 I mean, it's, it's a child that you, that is not going to misbehave, but, <laughs> right? but, yeah. but still you feel that it's part of you when you make It's part of right. you, but what also, uh, through the years, I, I learned we are we are alive, and uh, the life is at uh, the beginning of the end. So I remember once I traveled with a show to, to Mexico and it was in commission and uh, it was smashed, you know, mm -hmm. the first. Yeah. And, uh, and then I cried and it was a disaster and it was just a tragedy. So that, that um, year my father passed away. So I just, just put in perspective things. So this is wood, mm -hmm. I'm alive, I'm going to do it again. So that's changed the perspective when you see the instrument. Yes, it's your creation, it's like kind of shell, but it's wood. And for a life, that's the magic of the contemporary nature, that we are alive to continue helping and so one instrument when it's done, it's a, it's a process. It's like an instrument has to play and then we have to change again the song goes and it's uh they don't know the sound alive. So that's that's really nice because we're really makers somewhere it's female or men, but we are alive as the makers and uh, Yeah, and you were talking about freedom and this is also what I feel. It's like I can see things like value making making music freedom because I can move from one continent to another and still do the job that I do and mm -hmm. that most of all because I make only new instruments so I don't have like a shop to, to work for or with. So I I can really, I can feel I was in Mexico last week because I need some warm weather and I was really, maybe I move to somewhere a bit warmer and I can just pack all my tools and go somewhere else. So this is freedom for me and I'm, I'm glad for that. Um, big now. Um, what they said, uh, two things. One is time, that we have to manage time. Mm -hmm. this, is, this sometimes is a pity because uh, I love when I can do things with uh, all the time and the kind that I mm -hmm. can get, and, but then you have deadlines and you have to do something else. You have some other things waiting for you in that day, so you always have to, to, to stop uh, and not to try to work faster because that can be messy. <laughs> yeah. Yes, again to accept what it is uh, and and get on. And about uh, freedom is also the possibility to travel and do some research and uh, travel in museums and uh, look at the old instruments, try to understand how they did them, and uh, that this gives you ideas and you try to to apply these ideas and maybe. Maybe it's fine, maybe it's not really, but you, you really learn something by doing it. And this is something that I really like about And uh, uh, sort of along those lines, um, with Daniela, your, the instrument that you specialize in is almost, uh, in a way, a hurdle. It's, just, it's, yes. some, it's, a chip, it's a, uh, something that is not well known necessarily, and, and it's something that you're the champion yes. of, right? <laughs> <laughs> the main that you make. Well, uh, I'm making uh, mostly uh, violoncello espada, cello espada, which uh, is an instrument that was uh, almost forgot, uh, was forgot, and it was uh, revived just uh, a couple of decades ago. And, um, well, this 
He does well, this is only for me, of course. They are bringing, bringing me ideas. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's uh, very small, uh, and um, it is what Bach called uh, the violoncello piccolo. Bach wrote uh, um, solos in his cantatas, in nine of his cantatas for this instrument. And uh, well, there was quite a carrel on it uh, because they first said, no, it's not possible, uh, uh, it's nonsense to play a cello so small and uh, in a horizontal position. But uh, then we started to travel and to study and uh, even other makers and researchers discovered so many, uh, so much documentation that uh, that raised a doubt about uh, about not doubting. <laughs> I mean, you have to accept that something was going on. And uh, yes, of course, when a uh, cellist with uh, playing the big cello uh, developed a uh, more um, fine uh, technique and they could play faster and on higher positions, this instrument was abandoned because it doesn't have really the, the volume and the, of, the, of the big cello. But this was uh, used by Bach uh, because it's, uh, it's a virtuoso instrument. It's an instrument uh, that can be played by a violinist. So by a violinist can bring his virtuosity on it, and uh, it has a voice on its own. So it's the middle instrument between the violins, violins, and the basses of the violin family. And this middle instrument was abandoned uh, already uh, at the time in which they standardized the quartet, because the quartet had two violins, viola, and cello. So they were not interested in this middle voice, which is the tenor. Even if in the choir there is still the tenor. So actually it's the violin family that has a missing voice. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was, uh, yes, uh, the first time I had this in my hand, uh, uh, I thought it was uh, just a big tool for viola players. <laughs> because viola players are always want a bigger viola, bigger viola. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the bigger viola. Uh, which, by the way, <laughs> which, by the way, is still like a cello on this, at the same octave of the cello. So uh, sounded like perfect to play Bach Swiss, but I thought it was nothing more than that. And then uh, we discovered that there is a lot more about it than this an instrument that has a, a dignity of its own. It just had a, a short story, but uh, a very interesting story. So, so yes, uh, this was a, was a luck to find this. And it came because uh, being, uh, well, as I started, I was already quite old to, to make violins. I was interested in learning any, anywhere. And uh, so I got in touch with an old friend, Dmitry Babirov, who was uh, to ask him how he designed the instrument and uh, on which uh, uh, on which legacy he relied to design instruments. And so my interest in designing my own instrument and understanding what uh, all the masters were doing brought me at the end to make uh, these kind of instruments, which uh, well we don't have. We have originals, but of course they were cut down, uh, used as, as a cello uh, for kids uh, or big violas. So there is always something to reconstruct 